Imagine yourself walking through a beautiful old growth forest. You have the trees above you, you're stepping over roots, and every once in a while you run into a mushroom. Well, that mushroom is just the tip of the iceberg because underneath it are vast expanses of mycelium that connect the entire forest. Both trees and mushrooms have their roles in the forest. So one way to think of it is that if the trees are the respiratory system of the planet, then this vast underground network of mycelium is kind of like the circulatory system of the planet. Planet. These fungal networks can kind of be thought of as the internet of nature, or as some people have called it, the wood wide web. But instead of fire memes and fake news, this natural internet conveys things like nutrients, chemical signals, and so much more. Traditionally, science and conservation efforts have focused on the above ground ecosystems, but it's becoming abundantly clear that we might need to focus a lot more on the systems beneath our feet. So prepare your mind because this video is going to make you a lot smarter whether you like it or not. Fungal networks are not insignificant, and scientists estimate that these networks extend for trillions of miles all around the world. But even though they are of critical importance, there's still so much more to be learned about the critical role that they play in our ecosystems. And just like so many other beautiful natural systems in the world, this subterranean one is at risk of being destroyed by human activity. I just learned about a new initiative by a group known as SPUN, which stands for the Society for the Protection of Underground Networks. And basically what they aim to do is study all of these underground fungal networks, figure out where they are, what they actually do, how they interact, with the forest around them, and most importantly, how we might be able to protect them and how that's important for protecting the overall health of the planet. I'm sure you're familiar with pulling up some moss in the forest or kicking over a rolled log and underneath it you'll quite typically see these crazy white filaments dancing like nobody's watching and growing all over the place. That white stuff is mycelium, a living, breathing organism that forms vast underground networks connecting fungi to the plants and trees around them. Mycelium comes in all different shapes and sizes and colors and looks depending on the species of mushroom. Some species are pretty simple, they're saprobic which means they basically just eat dead or decaying matter. So they'll grow on dead logs or they'll grow on dung and they don't really have a complex life cycle. Other species, however, are known as mycorrhizal, which means they exist in a complex relationship with the plants and the trees around them. And mycorrhizal mushrooms or mycorrhizal mycelium is what we're mostly going to be talking about in this video. People often refer to mycorrhizal mushrooms and plants as living together in a symbiotic relationship, but it's not like it's a total love affair. It's more like a given and take capitalist style relationship where the trees do some things for the mushrooms and the mushrooms do some things for the trees. One example of how this works is when mushroom mycelium grows over and fuses with tree roots. The mycelium is then able to grow far and wide so it can capture more water and resources for the tree. In exchange, the tree then delivers sugars and carbon to the mycelium. And mushrooms can be extra sneaky about extracting the most value out of this symbiotic relationship. In one study, when faced with an unequal supply of nutrients across their networks, mycorrhizal fungi actually moved phosphorus to areas of scarcity. Here, the phosphorus was in higher demand, so it fetched a higher price. So by moving this phosphorus around, the fungi was actually able to receive higher quantities of carbon in return. When talking about natural ecosystems and fungal networks are no different, we often hear that survival of the fittest is the only thing that applies, but at the end of the day, the truth is a lot more nuanced. Fun fact, many gourmet mushrooms that you might be familiar with, like porcinis and chanterelles and morels, these are all mycorrhizal mushrooms. They have really complex life cycles, which is the reason why they cannot be cultivated and need to be wild harvested. So mushrooms help trees and trees help mushrooms, but what do these fungal networks actually do for us and why would we want to protect them? Well, one extremely important role that fungal networks play is carbon sequestration. Fungi store and use carbon in three ways. First, fungi actually use carbon as a building substrate and using it to rapidly expand their networks in the soil. You can kind of think of it like the fungi are using this carbon to build out the highways or super highways under the soil and plants use these highways to spread their nutrients around. So the fungi get more carbon and sugar from the plants to go build more of these networks and the plants get paid in nutrient efficiency. Second, this sequestered carbon is used to create fungal 
fungal exudates, which was a new word for me. These are basically tough organic compounds that help form stronger soils. These exudates act as a stable carbon reservoir, which reduces erosion rates and helps to maintain soil structure. Third, sequestered carbon is stored in fungal necromass, which again was another new word for me. Necromass describes underground networks that are no longer active, but their complex architecture is structurally woven into the soil. And there's a lot of it. Up to one half of the soil is composed of microbial necromass, and this really does help stabilize the soil. So this essentially means that even after death, these fungal networks continue to do the heavy lifting and store carbon for us. So basically, without these underground fungal networks, the forests that sustain the planet and that sustain life on this planet, including human life, would be in dire shape. So we've heard time and time again that the forests really are the lungs of the planet, taking in our carbon dioxide that we're speaking out and breathing out all the time and giving us sweet, sweet oxygen. But you might not have known that ecosystems with a healthy fungal network can actually store up to eight times more carbon than forests without a healthy fungal network. Of course, it's not just fungal networks because there's other carbon sources like leaves that will hold on to lots of carbon, but fungal networks can actually hold on to this carbon for a lot longer and might help to slow the rising CO2 levels. And just to show how important this is, soil is actually the second largest carbon sink in the world, second only to the oceans. Fungal networks are also important to humans because they have the ability to harvest resources from much deeper in the earth that plants can't necessarily reach. One example of this is phosphorus, which I talked about earlier, that mycelium is really good at kind of moving around. But phosphorus is actually a really important nutrient, right? You see it in a lot of fertilizers and we need it for food production, but it is kind of scarce. By 2040 to 2050, the demand for phosphorus is even projected to potentially outpace the supply of it. As this resource, phosphorus, becomes more and more scarce, Scarce, the importance of functioning fungal networks will become more and more important. And here's why. Mycorrhizal fungal networks can increase the reach of a plant's root by over a hundred times. They've developed really sophisticated ways to find and transport phosphorus through these fungal networks. When fungal networks get destroyed, we lose access to their powerful abilities to forage nutrients in the soil. Fungal networks also support ecosystem biodiversity. From the rainforest to the tundra, it's fungal networks that support the base of the food web that support all terrestrial organisms. Fungal networks feed plants, they protect them from metal toxicity, they protect them from getting too salty, they protect them from drought, and they even protect them from herbivores. Fungal networks also help prevent disease in plants. And they also support the ability of plants to fight off diseases and pathogens by stimulating the plants to produce defensive chemicals. You might even have heard of mycopesticides that scientists are now developing, where it's basically a pesticide that's made from mushrooms to help plants thrive and grow. This means that we can eat more food with less pesticides. So we've talked about some of the benefits of fungal networks and why they're so important, but what are some of the threats that these fungal networks are facing? Well, habitat loss is the main one, and this is the major driver of biodiversity loss for plants, for animals, and of course, for fungi. Because without their plant partners, fungal networks just cannot survive. We're talking logging, agriculture, urbanization, all of this stuff is a major disruption to the fungal networks. This impairs their ability to sequester carbon, to move nutrients around, to support the soils. All the stuff that we talked about is the best qualities of the fungal network. Nearly all food crops that we depend on also depend on fungal networks to really thrive. And modern industrial practices and modern agriculture employ strategies that isn't very supportive of these fungal networks. Without their fungal partners, these crops require more chemical inputs and are also more susceptible to drought, soil erosion, salinity. And again, all of these things we talk about that fungal networks help to to support. Also, the less adaptable these crops are, the less likely they are to bounce back from a pathogen or a blight or something like that. Now, these issues go hand in hand, but our changing climate is another nasty thing that our fungal friends have to contend with. Things like massive wildfires and droughts and floods, all of these things really affect the ability of the fungal network to do the things that it does best, which is sequester carbon and move nutrients around, overall supporting the planet. At the end of the day, these fungal networks are incredibly important and we should probably do what we can to try and protect them.
The first step in saving these critically important networks is to actually understand what it is that we're trying to save. And that is where the Society for Protection of Underground Networks comes in, also known as SPUN. And again, as I mentioned at the top, I just found out about SPUN and this is what inspired me to do this video. According to their website, SPUN is a nonprofit science-based initiative founded to map fungal networks and advocate for their protection. They propose that fungal networks and the services they provide are analogous to clean air and clean water. The SPUN organization includes scientists from all over the world, and they're also advised by relatively big names in mycology and natural science like Jane Goodall, Michael Pollan, and Merlin Sheldrake. SPUN's most recent project intends to map out the trillions of miles of underground networks for conservation and research purposes. Mapping out these networks, I can imagine, is an insanely large project, but the overall goal is to really just protect these networks and even potentially find ways that could improve the ways that they could sequester carbon. SPUN has already identified 10 hotspots where they're going to start mapping out these fungal networks, which include Canada and the Canadian tundra, the Mexican plateau, the high altitudes of South America, Morocco, the Western Sahara, Israel, Kazakhstan, the grasslands in Tibet, and even in Russia. So it just goes to show how really diverse these fungal networks are. The first collections will take place in Patagonia in 2022 and will form the basis for what types of networks to look for and to prioritize from a conservation standpoint. Thanks for sticking with us. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a lot more about fungal networks. So next time you're walking around in the forest, you'll know that there's a whole amazing world happening just under your feet. So thank Thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Tony from FreshCap.com and we'll see you in the next one. Do you want to become a functional mushroom expert? I've got just the thing for you. It's a new ebook called Mushroom Powered, the history, the science, and the benefits of the world's most fantastic fungi. At over 130 pages, it's absolutely packed with all the information you need to know to learn about the world's most powerful medicinal mushrooms. And the best part, it's 100% free. You can download it right now. Just click the link in the description, enter your email address, and I will send it to you right away. I hope you love it.